Hi, I'm Cal Van Doren, an engineer here at ANSYS, and today I want to talk about another addition to the Operator's Toolbox uh, Toolkit, which is the Debris Generator. Now, with the recent release of Operator's Toolbox version 1.3, um, the G Debris Generator was added to allow folks to create Gaussian distribution uh, debris and then propagate it after a collision event might occur in your scenario. And then from that point on, you could, you could use this debris to analyze things like uh, potential threats to other objects or potential re-collisions between uh, debris clouds after a collision. So I'm going to walk you through today how to create a very, very simple uh, first blush debris cloud. And then we'll go through the analysis that you can uh, do in SDK with that according debris cloud. So going into SDK here, what I have is I have a simple scenario that we created based on the uh, Meridium Cosmos collision back in 2009. So these are the TLEs that, was, that were taken from that uh, exact day. And we have a little bit of data about what the uh, debris fields for those objects looked like after the fact. And we're going to go ahead and try to recreate that within SDK using the debris generator. So what I can see here as I uh, look at the scenario and as I animate a bit forward in time is that we have the Iridium satellite here. And we're at the perspective of the Iridium at the moment. And we have the cosmos coming in from the side. And you can see, using analysis workbench, I've defined an intercept angle here that is the angle between the velocity vector of Iridium and the velocity vector of Cosmos. And so in this case, I can see that intercept angle we're predicting to be about 102.47 degrees. So I'll be able to use this angle to seed the debris generation process for both of these satellites. So I'll go ahead and get into the operator's toolbox portion here. I'm going to right click on my scenario, open up my scenario plugins, and open up operator's toolbox. Next, I'm going to open up the debris generator. And what I'll see here is I have a few options on the right hand side. So first, I need to define the epoch of this breakup. So in this case, I'm going to determine at what uh, time these two objects collide. And that will be the moment where all of the debris is created that then is then propagated in my scenario. I define which satellite is creating the debris. And then I go through um, the breakup model itself. So in this case, we're going to use the Gaussian breakup method. And what this does is you define a, a center point, delta v, and then a sigma on that delta v. And for each um, piece of debris that's created, there's a Gaussian random draw that's done on that to determine what delta v will be imparted on that particular uh, piece of debris. So you can uh, define basically how much range there will be in delta v on those pieces, as well as the range in mass, which also has an according Gaussian random draw, and the azimuth and elevation that that delta v is imparted on that piece of debris. Then every time a new piece of debris is created, a Gaussian random draw is done on all of those individual parameters, and an according object is launched uh, that is then propagated within SDK. And you can contain all those objects in an MTO, a multi-track object, that allows you to uh, then go perform subsequent analysis with all of your pieces of debris that you have defined. So in this case, uh, first, I'll go ahead and do it for the Cosmos satellite. So in this, in this uh, specific scenario here, I know that my collision occurred at uh, 1656 on the 10th of February 2009. So I'll go ahead to my breakup epoch here and I'll say 10th of February 2009 at 1656. I'm going to break up the Cosmos satellite. I'll use the Gaussian breakup method. I'm going to create 100 pieces of debris. Um, in reality, there were actually 960 pieces of debris that got tracked. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller so that everything runs faster. But if I were doing this actual analysis and wanting to recreate it, I would put in the full 960 pieces of debris. I'm going to propagate each piece of debris for 12 hours. And in this case, I'm going to impart a, a mean delta v on these pieces of debris of uh, 0.1. And that is going to be in kilometers per second. And then uh, I will apply a sigma to that for the Gaussian random draw of 0.1 as well. So in actuality, with the Cosmos breakup, the average uh, mass of the pieces of debris that were picked up, at least tracked, was 0.938 kilograms. In this case, we'll make it 1 kilogram, and we'll put a sigma on that of 0.5 kilograms. Now, the azimuth that's going to be used here is uh, going to be the, uh, the average azimuth of the delta V that's imparted on each of these pieces of debris. In this case, in the Cosmos uh, reference frame, that's going to be negative 102.47. So I'll go ahead and do that here.
and I will put a sigma on that azimuth of 30 degrees. Now the elevation, we can see um, this is essentially a hit at a zero elevation, so essentially a zero flight path angle between these two objects. So I'm actually going to leave the center point elevation as zero degrees, and I will uh, leave that sigma there as 20 degrees as well. Then I can specify my output type. Instead of individual satellites, I'm going to just make my output type one single MTO object, that multi-track object. And I'll make my output color uh, purple because we're breaking up the Cosmos satellite, so it'll just make sense visually. From that point, I can go ahead and hit generate, and all these pieces of debris will be created. Now that that's done, I'm going to do exactly the same thing for Iridium, and most of the work is already done for us. So I'll swap over to Iridium. I'll change my azimuth from positive or from negative to positive to indicate um, there's a flip in the sign there. And then I'll change my output color from purple over to uh, blue, and then I can rerun exactly the same analysis for Iridium. Now that the debris generation is finished, you can see in the top left here of my object browser, I have two new MTOs that represent the debris clouds for each of these objects. And as I animate forward in time to the point of collision, I can see my debris cloud has been created, and each of my pieces of debris are being propagated forward in time. I could go forward and uh, you know, make sure that Iridium and Cosmos themselves disappear at this point in time, and then I would just see these two clouds propagating forward. And these are actual analytical objects that I could continue to use um, for subsequent analysis. I could do an advanced uh, CAT analysis to determine if any of these pieces of debris might be hitting another object that I'm interested in. And you can imagine in the, the world we live in of a very congested uh, space environment, how uh, this form of analysis will probably continue to grow in, in usefulness going forward. So thank you very much for watching this video, and as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us at support at agi.com. Thanks.